ghosts. We don't see them with our natural eye. Oh shit! Oh shit! Did you see that? They're here, you just can't see them. Oh shit! What the? What? Did you hear that? Holy oh, shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit. Mother! Brigham Young University, home to over 30,000 students and nearly 6,000 faculty and staff, BYU campus is bustling with activity. But students and teachers aren't the only ones roaming these halls. Rumors circulate that certain buildings on campus are haunted. This is one of them. Constructed in 1911, the Carl G. Mazur Building was built to honor its namesake, Professor Carl Mazur, who had passed away 10 years earlier. Although Mazur never saw the building in his lifetime, it is believed he now roams the halls as a spirit. Years prior to the construction of this building, the area was known as Temple Hill. Between 1850 and 1880, it served as a cemetery. 60 people were buried there. When the ground was deemed too sandy to continue use as a graveyard, the bodies were exhumed and moved to a new location. It appears, however, that the spirits of the deceased did not leave with their bodies. We have come to investigate this building and contact any spirits that may be here. If there are any ghosts in here with us tonight, please don't hesitate. Make yourself known. This is the main floor. Okay, so totally saw a flashing light, but it's a smoke detector, so. <laughs> Are there any spirits on this floor? Okay, I can hear it. Debunked. Darn it, for one it second. Is, right is it? What's it doing? Our camera battery continued to fluctuate throughout the evening. Was this a spirit trying to drain the energy from our battery in order to manifest? Judging by what happened a few minutes later, we believe the answer is yes. That's one dark hallway. <laughs> Bottoms up. The sound which Sean heard was not heard by me, but was picked up by his camera's audio. We'll replay it for you. After taking a moment to collect ourselves, we decided to review the evidence we had just collected. While doing so, our point of view camera picked up a chilling EVP. We're just reviewing. Here it is again with enhanced audio. So we're just reviewing. Sure, we can find it. Please come out and show yourself. That is so creepy. Yeah, I wish we could get in there. What, flashlights going on up here, Just because it seems kind of cool. I'm going to put it in the for you guys. Fancy. Is that a gold trash can? Yeah. 
fancy like a brass gold church. Do you just hear that? Somebody just like walks by. Oh gosh. Ooh, ooh. I'd leave my Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Dang straight, you leave your Dr. Pepper. Oh shit! Oh shit! Did you see that? Oh my gosh, I'm not even joking. I'm not even I was feeling that I wasn't looking at it. I swear I saw something. Like, not even not like a person, not Our cameras, unfortunately, did not pick up the sounds we heard nor the shadow Sean saw. We did, however, capture two unexplainable orbs of light. The first orb is seen flying up the stairs across from us. Is this a spirit running towards us, perhaps in response to Sean's statement just moments earlier? The second orb is much harder to see, so we have slowed down the footage. Look at this chair on the first floor. Moments before Sean sees a shadow move across it, we captured this brief blinking light. It is easier to see it in this still frame image. What we are about to show you may very well be the most disturbing image we collected all night. If you have a weak stomach, we advise you look away now. It's never a good sign. <laughs> Ow, this is so hot pocket. Well, it is called a hot pocket, not a warm pocket. This bone-chilling EVP was not heard by either Sean or myself, but it was picked up by our point-of-view camera. We'll replay it for you with enhanced audio. To us it sounds like a spirit saying, hello, as if it's trying to get our attention. This becomes even more significant a few moments later when we enter the elevator. Yeah, I told you it's a creepy elevator, dude. Ah! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Mother! The dream! Open! Yeah, I told you it's a creepy elevator, dude. Ah, oh, mother, F, ah, F word. Oh, she's, oh, she's, mother, freak, the jury is now. Open. No, oh, don't leave me. I swear, that picture, oh my gosh. The sound that Sean reacted to was picked up by the point of view camera's audio currently hanging around his neck. We'll replay it for you with enhanced audio. Oh, shit! It sounds to us as if there are two separate voices. The first, a long but quiet whisper. And the second, a much shorter but also much louder voice. We can't tell what the second voice is saying, but to us it sounds like the first voice is whispering, Hi, Sean. We'll replay it for you again. You decide. I swear I heard something. Okay, we're going up one floor. It makes sense to us that the voice would be saying, Hi, Sean, trying to grab his attention because only moments earlier, we picked up another voice saying, hello. Clearly there was a spirit here trying to get our attention. I'm glad there's a flipping statue. And so we conclude our investigation. 
We spent only two hours here, but in that short time, the Mazer building proved to be a very active hotspot for paranormal phenomena. Was Carl Mazer the one responsible for what we experienced here? Or were the things we saw and heard the spirits of the restless souls of the 60 individuals buried here? While we may never know who is roaming these halls, the evidence collected here is compelling, and we conclude that the Mazer building is indeed haunted.